So, uh, the tape was unexpectedly off, <laughs> so I'm not sure what's happened, but uh, what we're going to try to do here is correct the position of the uh, anti-nodal line here, which you want to be right where the sound post is supposed to go, which is right here. This is really where the, the bridge line, that's good on the front, uh, which is mostly correct. So I'm just going to set this back over here, and I'm just going to identify that. This is kind of a high spot there, acoustical high spot. So I'm just going to scrape. a little bit here. Let's put it back down. Now let's find out if our anti-nodal line has shifted. looks like it's right here now, which is where we want it to be. So there was just a little extra wood left right here, and you could scrape this off on the inside just as easy. Um, so now it's shifted, and now the, this violin would start performing a lot better when the sound post is coming down right in this high energy line. All right. Um, so again, these are the uh, frequencies that were on the top, and um, these though, are the ideal frequencies. When these come up, and you look on our website, um, violinresearch.com, and just click in the middle. Um, this is kind of a big oval. And then on the, the exploded violin, just click on acoustical, uh, the tab, or the top plate, or the back plate tab, and you'll uh, find an article about what these frequencies should be. And also, of course, how you can uh, make this tool and calibrate it. So now that's about it. It's the important, though, is that the uh, sound post comes down exactly on this anti-nodal line, the high frequency overtone and that the low pitch here should be right in line with the inner notch on the right sound hole, and it's right where the bridge should be. So if those things match, uh, your violin is going to be a lot closer to realizing its full potential. Okay, thank you. Hey, Dave Langsather of violinresearch.com. I just wanted to give you a little overview again. I was having problems with my video cutting out after I'd done a nice job recording it because the battery was low. So um, these are the frequencies on the top that we recorded, but they're not the frequencies that we wanted. And I'll just go ahead and put those on here so you can see what they would be. Um, Okay, so we want this to be 253, so that's very good. We want this one down here to be 242. Which is, should be the same as the back plate. But instead it's, it's up here where that one should be 232. And this bottom one, which um, should be 272, and that should be 272, and that should be 272, and this middle one should be 198. So 
um, even though it's very close, this nodal line is very close to being in line with the inner notch of the uh, sound hole, which is halfway between here and there in a vertical direction here. Um, so just because the plate so uneven is graduating, you know, just the taps are just all over the place. This is actually pretty good. Um, and everything else here is quite a bit off. So uh, that's not a good sign. Probably just needs to be regraduated. And uh, maybe the wood's fine. It just needs to be the dimensioning a little bit inside needs to be changed. Uh, it looks like you can kind of see an outline here of what they wanted to be the um, thicker part of the plate. This is just a donation. And the back plate, um, these are the frequencies we measured. And those are the correct frequencies. And they're all in the tap tone scale, the music scale. Uh, that's what our ear hears best. And the 306 in the middle was here. And uh, we could hear there was a high, higher pitch in the middle that wasn't, didn't belong there. And so just a little bit of scraping, kind of see about what we took off. Uh, brought it down so that was even instead of high here. And it shifted it uh, from there right there and then using our little template we got from the other side even with the top of the plate and that's in line with the inner mark and the dimension to the sound post is 21 64th which is 0 0.328 inches more okay, even with the top plate there's where it should be. And now it's exactly sound postal touch in this high frequency line. And it was just, just a matter of just a little scraping on an area that was slightly too much wood shifted it uh, to here. And I could tell that it had to be something over here that was off because these are right on and the graduation is quite even. So if your violin you're looking at has a sound post in the high frequency area, has the um, this low pitch nodal line right line with the notch right where your bridge is, and it'd be handy if this was where it should be, which is should sound like this. And with a different kind of tap is spruce tapper. So that's just kind of a little overview, and um, just by doing these uh, overtones, it's kind of nodes and anti-nodes, and we'll just go over this again. You can see where they are. Kind of here going to high pitch, and that's this nodal line that comes like that, what we call it a mode 5 nodal line. And then there's a high frequency or high pitch here and a high pitch there. And then this is the lowest pitch here in the middle. Again, in between the upper end of the sound holes. And again, this is the node line, node, node 5 line, they call it. And then this is the uh, anti-node, the place where it's the most active acoustically. So the position of these, uh, this probably should be more like here. That's not too bad. This line should come up more like that. So it just poorly graduated on the inside. Like I said, you could just take this finish off and just graduate it outside, smooth it, and then uh, re revarnish it to correct that. And the back plate now is exactly where it should be. So um, I just wanted to share that with you, and thanks for listening.